Howdy out there, Facebook. This is Evangelist Agricola coming to you by the way of live video today. Please hop on here and join us. We had some technical difficulties there in our last video, so I took that off. So we'll wait just a few minutes and let the people hop on here and join us. Lord has been good. This is a day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad therein. I will wait just a few minutes and let some people hop on here and be with us. Because um, I know we had some technical difficulties with our last video there, but I was thinking today, the Lord dropped some stuff into my spirit, and I wanted to share that with y'all on Facebook today, and hope y'all could tune in and watch with us, but uh, there's an old song that I remember them saying, and it went, uh, who's going to tell my children's children, and it said, who's going to teach them how to live, the way things look, it's slowly fading, and then they'll need something they can give. The song, the first verse of that song said, The Lord said there be a famine in the land, not for bread and water, but hearing of his plan. The way it looks to me, it's already come to pass, and I wonder just how much longer can it last. I look around the world today. I look at the cities, and I look at people, how we've turned our back against God, and we threw God out of everything, and we expect you know God to move, but we threw him out of everything. We're, we're fighting now, and we're fighting against flesh and blood. We're fighting each other. The war that's been going on, tearing at our soul. See, we're not fighting the adversary like we should be, but we're fighting each other. We're fighting these people down the road because they don't believe the same way we do, and we're fighting against this person because they don't look the same way we do. Let me tell you, when Jesus looks down on us, he don't see black, white, yellow, brown, red. He sees the blood that he shed from Calvary. And if, my friends, if we're washed in the blood of the lamb we don't got nothing to worry about because he's not going to see color he's not the lord don't see color he don't see red white brown yellow he don't see none of that he sees the blood that he shed he's not i mean and it's time that the christian people we don't see red white yellow brown but we see that hey these are my brothers and sisters they got down in the altars and they prayed and they're a born again christian the bible said that we are all in one body but we all have different jobs so i'm here to tell you today church that if we've been saved, washed in the blood of the Lamb, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost and fire, we are part of that body of Christ. We're not separated. We're not working through a different body, but we're working through the body of Jesus Christ. The Bible said that in the book of Ephesians, the sixth chapter, the twelfth verse, he said, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual witnesses, witnesses in high places. We are not fighting a war against each other. This is not a war against denomination. This is not a war against each other. This is a war, my friends, against an adversary that is out stealing and killing to and fro the earth. But Jesus said, I give you power to tread over serpents and scorpions. My friends, it's time we get into prayer and we realize, hey, these are the enemy's tactics. He wants to divide his people because when people come together and come in unity, that's when God works and the devil knows that when we come into unity and we come into one accord that's when God's going to do something and he don't want the people the church of God to come together in unity because he knows that if we come in together in unity that things will get done people will be saved delivered and set free and so the devil is going around and he's trying to divide one another and we're looking at each other's color of our skin saying well if you're not this and that let me tell you I don't care what color you are we are not looking at color we're looking at the blood are you washed in the blood I I don't care if you're black, white, yellow, brown. You gotta be washed in the blood. The Lord does not see color, but he sees the blood. And my friends, it's time we get washed in the blood of the Lamb. We fully get washed in that blood. And when we get washed in that blood, He can take a heart that's so black and wash it as white as snow. But I'm here to tell you people, in these last days, we're not fighting a war against each other. We're not in spiritual warfare against our brothers and sisters. We are in spiritual warfare against the enemy. And the enemy came to steal, kill, and destroy. The Bible tells me this. But the Bible goes on to tell me that in the book of Revelation, that an angel is going to wrap a chain around the devil and throw him in the lake of fire. And there will he be forever in torment. I'm here to tell you, church, the devil has already defeated the battle that you're in. Today has already been one because Jesus said it. He said in his word, the victory is yours. The power is yours. The anointing is yours. He said to go and he'll go with you. He said no weapon that is formed against you shall be able to prosper. 
Weapons might be formed and they might be all around us, but no weapon that is formed against me and you shall be able to prosper. I'm here to tell you today, church, the Lord dropped this into my spirit just a few minutes ago and he dropped this verse, Ephesians 6 and 12, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. I look around me today and I see people fighting against police officers and I see them fighting against each other because, hey, they go around and they say, well, you're not this color, you're not that color, we don't want you here, you, you, you're you not accepted. And then we want to go around and say this and we want to agree with that. I'm here to tell you, church of the living God, we are not in a war against each other. I don't know how much that we need to stress this, but for revival to take place, we have to come together, all the body of Christ as one. And when we come together as one in the body of Christ, then we will see revival. Do we want to see revival? Are we hoping and wishing for revival? Because if we are wanting and hoping for revival, we will stand up and say, Lord, give me the revival. And when we want that revival enough, we're going to stand up and say, God, I will be the move. If you move in me, I'll move and I'll move for you. God's not looking for another uh, move in, move out revival. God is looking for a people that's going to stand up and be the revival. God is looking for a people that's going to stand up and say, hey, I'm standing on the word. The word that the Bible said, heaven and earth will pass away, but not one jot or tittle of this word of God will pass away. But I wanted to share this verse with you real quick. And it said, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So church, I'm here to tell you today that we're not fighting a war. It's not me and you fighting each other. It's not the Pentecostal and the Baptist fighting each other. It's not the Pentecostal and and the Methodist fighting each other. It is one body, we as the body, one body, as many members as we are in one body fighting a war against the adversary that came to steal, kill, and destroy. So we are in a war against Satan, my friends, and it's time that we get our our armor on, we get our hearts cleaned out and, and ready to fight the good fight of faith because we're not in a war against each other, we're in a war against Satan. And the Lord dropped this into my spirit this morning and I wanted to share that with you. And I began to read in my Bible in the book of Matthew, the 24th chapter, and I just said to myself, I'm not looking for signs no more, but I'm listening for the trumpet of God because the Bible said that an hour you think not the Son of Man would come in great power and glory. I'm telling you, church, I feel the Holy Ghost as I'm here today. The Bible said that the Son of Man would appear in great power and glory. I'm telling you, G-O, hallelujah, Jesus Christ is soon coming back for His bride that have made themselves ready, the people that's been washed in the blood of the Lamb. They've been saying, hey, well, we're just going to stay behind. And what I'm telling you, when Jesus comes back, I will be going up in the cloud to be with him. Hallelujah. I'm ready. Are you ready? Are you washed in the blood? Are you washed in that blood that was shed from Calvary 2,000 years ago when he looked up to the Father and he said, Father, it's finished. This work's done. And he went on to be with his Father on the right hand. And the Bible said that he made intercession for me and you. I'm telling you, church, the Bible said it. It's going to take place. My friends, death is an appointment that we cannot cancel. Death is an appointment we cannot schedule, but it is appointed unto men to die. And after this, the judgment. I'm telling you that you are going to die. And whether you've accepted Jesus or not, if you've not accepted Jesus, you will look down and your eyes will be in everlasting torment. And the Bible said that the fire is never quenched and the worm it never dieth. But he said there's a place, a beautiful place that he went and prepared. And he spoke in his word. He said, I go and I prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I'll come again and I'll receive you unto myself that where I am, you may be also. So Jesus said, hey, I'm leaving and I'm going to come again and receive you. Just wait. 
He's not forgotten about us, church. He's not turned his ear on us, but he hears us when we pray. Daniel might have thought the first time he prayed, God has not heard me. But then that night when Daniel went to sleep and the lions hadn't ate him up, then he knew, hey, God's moving for me. God's fighting my battle. You might be in a den of lions right now and the lions all around you. God still sustain you. God still kept you. You've not been ate up by lions yet. You've not been devoured yet. But God has his hand over his people. You might be going through the water right now, but at the end of the day when you look through, hey, when a seed goes through water, you know what happens? That water grows the seed. That water replenishes the ground and gives the ground the nutrients to grow the seed through the ground. Hallelujah. Am I preaching to some folk today? When we go through the fire, we might not see it. The enemy wants to come and tell us, hey, you're going to get burnt in the fire and that's going to be it. But hey, when we go through the fire, the fire is what purifies us. See, we are gold and when gold goes through fire, gold gets purified. And I'm here to tell you today that you have the victory in this season. You are not defeated. The devil will whisper in your ear. He'll whisper defeat. But I tell you, you got the victory. The victory is yours. The battle that you're in is already been won. <laughs> Sometimes when we get down in the muck and, the, and in the mire and we look up and the giant's so tall, sometimes we got to get down there and realize, hey, the giant's so tall. But then we look on up and say, hey, my God's even bigger. And God sometimes wants us to get down into that pit to say, hey, to look and see, hey, God is still higher. God is still able to pick me up. He brought me out. So, oh, hallelujah, seven to, uh, when I was, he saved me when I was 10 and he picked me up by the Mari Clay. If he picked me up by the Mari Clay when I was 10, he can pick me up by the Mari Clay. Any time in my life when I get down, God is able to pick me up. And God sometimes, hey, he's a powerful God, but we forget, hey, God is all powerful and God is almighty. And we just want to go on our own. And God wants us to get down to that state of realization to, hey, God is bigger than anything that I'm facing in my life. God is able to perform miracles in my life. God is still able to do exceedingly abundantly and above what I think, ask or say, God is able to do do it. But first we have to get to that realization stage to where we see God is bigger. See, the prodigal had to realize, hey, I've done wrong. I need to go back to my father. And when the prodigal realized that he'd done wrong, he knew that he could go to his father's house and he would be welcome. At that time, the enemy wanted to tell the prodigal, hey, you're going to go back and your father's going to send you to work. But that's what the enemy wants to tell you. He wants to whisper into your ear, hey, don't go back to the father. That's not the place for you to be. You've already went too far. There's no going back. But the same road that you went on, you turn back and you keep looking back. Because I'm telling you, if you go back to that road you used to travel on, that road that led in holiness and righteousness, it'll take you back home to the father. When you get down and you pray, honey, I'm telling you that prayer will get you back to the Father. That walk with God will get you back to the Father. The enemy wants to remind you of how far that you come. And he wants to tell you that you can't get back. But I'm here to tell you that you can get back to where you once was. The enemy is a liar. The Bible said that he is the author of confusion. He came to steal, kill, and destroy but Jesus came to give life and give it to us more abundantly. And if we got to realize, hey, Jesus wants to give me life and give it to me more abundantly. How am I going to get the abundant life if I don't get out of the shape that I'm in? See, we we first have to realize, hey, I'm in the muck. I'm in the mire. I'm in this sin state. But hey, there's a way out. We got to realize Jesus is the way out. And when we see Jesus as the way out, that's when he will truly bring us out. It's not going to take a 12-step program. It's not going to take a meeting. It's not going to take talking to me. It's going to take a one step thing. And that is realizing, hey, I've done wrong. And then it's going to say, hey, I, Father, I know I love you, but you're plentiful in mercy and you're ready to forgive me. This is just coming. This is coming. I thank God for his spirit. I thank God that when we get in prayer and we listen to God, God will tell us things and he will show us things. I'm here to tell you, church, the battle that you're in, the season that you're in, it might look like you're in defeat right now, but I came to tell you, I declare and decree victory is yours today because of Calvary. You will not go under. You will not come out 
the way you came in, but you will come out greater than what you went in. Some of you have been crying yourself to sleep saying, God, when am I going to get out of this? I came here to tell you, today is the day that the Lord is going to bring you out of that situation that you're in. Oh, God, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. But the Lord pressed this on my heart early this morning as I begin to pray and I begin to see God. He told me, hey, we're not in a war against each other. Church, we are not in a war against each other. We're not fighting each other. People, we're not fighting our brothers and sisters. We're not fighting each other. We're fighting against the adversary. We are fighting against the devil. We need to get fully prayed up to when we, when we see our brother in a fault, we won't go and say, hey, you're in a fault. You've done wrong, but we'll go and say, hey, brother, I'm here to pray for you. I'm here to help you. And when they come up to us and they whisper in their ear, say, hey, I've been going through this. You got any help for me? And then we whisper to them and then... Later on, we'll go in to the other crowd and say, hey, did you hear what so-and-so's going through? It's not time we talk about each other and we whisper about each other and we go spread rumors about each other. We're not supposed to be spreading rumors about each other. We're not supposed to be fighting each other, but we are supposed to be spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. I came to tell you people of God that you're not fighting against each other, but you are fighting against the devil. It makes me mad and so, oh my Lord, it makes me mad that the devil has come and he has showed himself and people have not realized, hey, this is Satan. And we've let him come right in. We've let him creep right in. We've let him ride us for so long. I tell you, the devil, we've played around with the devil long enough. It's time we throw him down and put him under our feet, church. You've got the victory. You've got the power. Now rise up in Jesus' name. Don't look back to that sin state, but look forward to Jesus Christ. I've read a lot in the past few days in the book of Matthew 24 and and again in Revelation and I see what's coming. I don't want to scare you, but I'm here to tell you that if you think it's bad right now, you just wait. It's just going to keep getting worse and worse and worse. If you think it's bad right now, you wait. It's going to keep getting worse. Saints, that's why it's time we get in prayer. That's time we quit playing around with sin. Because when we play around with sin, sooner or later, that sin's going to take us in. That sin's going to take us in sooner or later. I'm telling you, church, it's time you quit playing around with sin. It's a dangerous thing to do to lay in the bed with sin one night and wake up and try to get rid of it. We can't just wake up and get out of sin. It's going to take a step down to the altar to get out of sin. If we keep playing around with sin, we're going to end up staying in that sin. If you really want to get rid of sin, you're going to go back to the place when you got lost in it and you're going to root it all out. Don't let none of it stay in, but cleanse your heart. You sinners, the Bible said, hallelujah, it's time we get fully sanctified, living holy and righteous unto God. It's going to take a way of holiness. The Bible said without holiness, no man will see the Lord. But I'm here to tell you folks, the Lord dropped this in my spirit. It is time we quit playing around with sin. We played around with sin so long, those people in the days of Noah began to play around with sin. Hey, it's nothing. It's not going to get to me. And when Noah's, when the door's closed to the ark, that's when they realize, hey, I played around with sin a little bit too long. In the days of Lot, when Lot went around and tried to warn people of their sin, and they realized, hey, I'm in sin, but they wanted to keep playing around with it. And the day that Sodom, that day that Lot left to Sodom and Gomorrah, it rained fire and brimstone out of heaven. I'm telling you, you keep playing around in your sin, and sooner or later, the door of mercy is going to close on you. Sin will take you farther than you want to go and keep you longer than you want to say sin is a dangerous thing to be playing around with. Sin is going to keep manifesting and keep growing if we don't go back to the place when we first got into it. We've got to get rid of sin. 
and live that life of godliness if we want to make it. I tell you, church, it's going to take a close walk to God. The Bible said that Job barely got in by the skin of his teeth. And the Bible said that Job was a righteous man. You might think you're living right and right now. You might think you're satisfied where you're at. But it's time we get unsatisfied where we're at and start seeking to live on higher levels. To start seeking to live closer to God. I want everybody to start getting uncomfortable with being comfortable. And when we get in the state of comfortable, when we get in the state of complacent, when we get in the state of self-satisfaction and we say, hey, I'm in the place that I want to be, that's when we realize, hey, the enemy wants me to tell me, hey, I'm here, I'm good, but secretly I'm playing around with sin. When I leave the church, I'm going home and I'm playing around with sin. I tell you, when we leave the church, we need to leave the sin on the altar because if you claim to be a Christian and you walk out of the church playing around with sin. Honey, it's gonna it's a dangerous thing to stay in sin because the devil is out to steal, kill, and destroy. And when we're walking in sin and not godliness, God, God is sending out a warning in these last days saying, hey, it's time to get that sin out of your life. That sin you've got hidden behind your heart. That sin you've got hidden in the back corners. It's time you lay that down on the altar because Jesus is soon coming. If we've got sin in our lives, we're not going to go to heaven. I didn't come here to I didn't come here to preach my doctrine. I didn't come here to preach my opinion. I'm preaching you the word of God. I'm preaching you what God sent, gave to me just a few minutes ago. You can play around with sin and claim to be a Christian, but one day the Lord's going to come back and you'll be left behind. Preacher, keep playing around with sin. Keep lusting over women. Keep lusting. Keep looking at stuff you shouldn't be looking at. Quit, keep watching stuff you shouldn't be watching at. And one day you're going to find yourself left behind. I'm just preaching. I'm preaching. I know some people ain't going to like what I'm preaching. But I didn't get into preaching to preach, to sugarcoat nothing. I came to preach you the truth. If it's got to be the raw truth, honey, I'm going to preach it. The raw truth with love. Because I love you and I want to re- you to realize, hey, there might be sin in my heart, but there's a way out of the sin and his name is Jesus. And he died for you and he loves you. That song said there's somebody out there with his arms open wide who longs to embrace you, wipe the tears from your eyes and his name is Jesus. We need to realize, church, sin is a dangerous game to be playing around with. In the hour and time we're living in right now, sin is a dangerous thing to be playing around with. Sin will take you out of here. Sin will take you out of here whether you're ready to go or not. Sin will take you places to where you never thought you would go. And sin will lead you wrong. But it is God that can get you out of that sin. My friends, if you want to get out of this sin, you got to get down at the altar. And remember, hey, this is when I got into the... Because if you keep living in this sin and you don't repent of it, this sin's going to go on generation to generation. And then it becomes a generational curse. It's It's up to you in this season and this time we're living in right now to get down on the altar and get rid of it. There's still fire on the altar. There's still power in the altar. There is still authority with the people of God. It's time we preach godliness like we used to preach. It's time we tell people, hey, sin is still sin. And I know some of you might not want to hear this, but I'll tell you what, if you're, oh my Lord, hallelujah, the Lord just dropped this, this is going to, I'm going to lose a lot of viewers on this, but I'm here to tell you, hallelujah, that if you're going out and you're dressing like the world, hallelujah, you can't be doing that and living like a Christian when you come to church and showing everything you got on the days that you're not in church, hallelujah. I'm just preaching. I'm preaching to you. You can wear what you want to, but one day, honey, I'm telling you that judgment is coming to every man and every woman and boy and girl that has not accepted Jesus Christ into their heart. (laughs) You can dress like the world on a Saturday and come to church on a Sunday. 
<laughs> you might think, yeah, you're, oh Lord, hallelujah. But I'm here to tell you, God is raising up a people that's going to stand up in righteousness and godliness. <laughs> I'm telling you, if I was to come on here dressed just any way and preach to you, if I was to go out there in the world and dress just any way, how are they going to see a difference in me? How are they going to see a light in me? When women are going out there wearing booty shorts and showing everything and showing cleavage, hallelujah, when men are going out there showing everything, I'm telling you, people are not going to know that you are a child of God, but it's going to take a light that's shining on the inside of you. And when you go out in the world, they're going to be able to tell a difference. When I go to the swimming pool, I don't wear everything. I don't get down naked, but I dress like I, I'm, I'm wearing holy clothes. I'm not showing everything that I've got, <laughs> but I'm living righteously even though I'm doing things. Even though the Bible said that you're in the world, but you're not of the world. I might be in the world. I might be doing, so I might be going swimming, but I don't, I don't have to dress like the world to go swimming. Oh, my Lord. Hallelujah. I feel the old Holy Ghost conviction. I feel that old school anointing that my pastors used to talk about and preach on me. Hallelujah. They used to preach hell so hot that you could feel it in the church. I'm just preaching like I feel it. And some of you may not like holiness, but I'm here to tell you that holiness is what's going to take us home. Holiness is what's going to take us home. Lord, have mercy. And you know, another thing that we need to get right is we can dress the holiness. We can dress the holiness. We can dress the part and not talk the talk. If you're not fully sanctified in your heart, dressing right on the outside ain't gonna, ain't gonna do you no good. But you gotta be sanctified on the inside. And when you're sanctified on the inside, it's gonna show on the outside. You won't need to change anything on the outside. But when you get saved, God will show you how to perform and the actions that you need to take. Lord, have mercy. I feel the Holy Ghost. <laughs> I'm just preaching. I'm preaching. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. I didn't think I would preach all this, but I feel the Spirit of God and God laid this on my heart. And I'm, I'm not, I'm, oh, hallelujah, I'm going to preach what God gives me. I'm not going to sugarcoat nothing. Because in these last days, there's a generation out there that's lost and dying, headed straight to hell. And they need to know that Jesus is the way out. God is raising up a people to stand up and say, hey, there's a way out of your sin. There's a way out of that life. And his name is Jesus. And he died so that you could have everlasting life. Oh, glory to God. He's Sunday, Conday, da da da. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I was preaching a revival in Ohio a couple days ago, and I was seeing young people line up the altars and pray. It's time this younger generation is rising up. My generation is rising up to be on fire for God. I'm telling you, church, today, it's not time you judge them younger people, but you tell them, hey, you can live it. You can do it. You can preach. You can live right. And no matter what age you are, you can still live it and walk it and talk it. You can still do it. Because I look in the churches around me today and a young person gets saved and gets in the family of God and then we say, hey, you get just because you're young, people can't listen to you. And people, when I was 12, I started preaching and they told me, hey, you're too young to preach. And they began to speak down on me. But I said, Jesus was, in the, was at the age of 12 and he was preaching the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It don't, it don't matter what age you are, you might be in your teenage years. You might be in your elder years. If God has called you to do, do, to do a work, honey, it's time you step up and you do the work God has called you to do. It don't matter if you're in your 90s. It just takes the call of God. It takes the anointing of the Holy Ghost. 
Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> but I'm telling you, church, it's time we as the body of Christ, young generation, old generation, it don't matter what color, we come together as one because we are many in one body and we preach the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It still takes holiness. It still takes living right. It still takes walking, walking right. It still takes talking and right. It still takes the blood. And the blood will take us home. Yeah, the blood will take us home to stay. Hallelujah. I'm here to tell you, church, I'm not on here judging nobody. I'm preaching to you holiness and righteousness. I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with this and that, but when we pertain ourselves to the garments of the world, we can dress holy. We can dress like we're a part of God's kingdom and still go out and people would realize we're God and not dress like, hey, I'm part of the world. I'm, there's a difference in what I'm preaching. And I don't think some people are getting to what I'm preaching, getting the exact thing of what I'm trying to throw out there. It, there's a difference in dressing modestly and dressing like the world. When we start dressing like the world, that's when people aren't going to see the light in us. But it's going to take a modest dressing. Uh, see, it's going to take modest dressing. God will convict you of things. It's not my talk, but God will convict you of what you should and should not wear. God will show you what you should and shouldn't wear. But when you go out there and you dress like you want to dress and people start lusting after you and people start wanting your body and you start showing your body off, that's when it becomes a sin. It becomes a sin when you become proud. It becomes a sin when you go out there and you show it to be showing it. That's when it becomes a sin, my friends. That is when God will convict you. But it's going to take the blood to forgive us and take us home. I didn't come on here to say all that, but the Lord was dealing with me and I was here to preach to you. I still believe in old time holiness, holiness, ho oh, Holy Ghost conviction. I believe in holiness. I believe that without it, no man shall see God. It is going to take living right. We can't live just any way and get to heaven. Buddha's not going to get us there. Muhammad's not going to get us there. Allah's not going to get us there. But it's going to take a close walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. And he said, you come after me and I'll make your fish as a man. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He's the way to the church. He is the way and he is the only way. I love each and every one of you. God bless you all. I hope you all have a blessed, wonderful day. Please like, share, and comment. Get the word out. I love each and every one of you, and I'm not here to judge you. I'm not here to put you down, but I'm here to tell you, hey, there's a higher level that you can step on to. There's a higher, le higher level you can press up to. You don't have to be satisfied where you're at, but you need to be satisfied with going on up. Don't be satisfied in the state that you're in, but go up. Keep pressing up. Don't look back. Don't look behind, but press forward to the price, the high calling of Jesus Christ. God bless you all.